What's up, everybody? Today is January 4th, 2023. It's Wednesday night. This is a talk in the attic, and I'm your host, Kirk Ross. I've got my friend Ryan Miller in studio today from Roasted Media Group. He specializes in cannabis photography. Let's start the show. with ryan miller ryan this is not the first time we sat down to do this is it no it's not the first time was like week one of the podcast i didn't know what i was doing it was early 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 on yeah we smoked a bunch of weed a lot (laughs) it was just not a great interview you gave you gave a lot of your story i appreciated learning about you it was fun for that reason for sure for sure but when it came down to releasing it it was just like i didn't i recorded it poorly you gave great answers, but we just were too high. Let's yeah. be honest here. I know I was. Yeah. And, and since the, <laughs> it's interesting because at the time, so you're a photographer. Yep. And, and beyond that, you're a, what, are, what, how would you, how would you describe what your company and your services? Uh, so roasted media, we're kind of like, um, you know, a one-stop shop for graphics, video, yeah. uh, photo, uh, especially in the cannabis industry. Um, this is new from when we first talked. The it is, part. it is. Uh, we definitely, you know, changed parallels. Uh, I used to shoot a lot of boudoir and like um, artistic stuff, uh, more portraiture. Yeah. Um, and I guess now, or not I guess, but now it's it's primarily uh, product photography, in studio stuff. Uh, where we are bringing a little bit more video to the playing field, so that's been a fun experience. Yeah. Uh, learning, 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 learning. But but learning. your product mix is like ninety percent cannabis now, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. That's crazy. That that's an when we first talked, it was right when we had we had just voted to become legal, I guess, but it, things were so slow. Yeah. And in the three years since then, almost three years since then. Yeah, it's things have definitely up. sped up, you know, as I'm sure everyone's aware, you know. Um cannabis is definitely a regular thing <laughs> in in more people's lives than it has been, at least in the public's eye. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, mixing that with my attention to detail and stuff, product photography just meant, made sense. What What are the, you like it? You like it? Right? I absolutely, I, I love it. it. You know, it's a, it's a new challenge every single day. Yeah. Every single time I get in the studio, it's, it's different. And how, but it, explain some of the differences, you know, like I, I can imagine a few of them, but from your, in your words, why is product photography, which could be maybe viewed as a little bit more boring at, at face value. Sure. Why do you find it? Why is it ultimately more attractive than portraiture? Uh, I th- I think for me is because like I have a g- a good mix of left and right brain, so details, details, details of what uh, is what drives me. Yeah. So being able to emulate both of those at the same time and be creative and logical, yeah. mathematical, um, really brings both of my passion, both of my sides of my head together in one for like. The first time in my entire life. Yeah, they're always <laughs> kind of competing before. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. You know, like I, I never really knew like what I exactly wanted to do. And it's kind of like falling in my lap and I absolutely love it. Uh, I get to spend more time at home with my family yeah. um, and kind of, you know, work with who I want to work with. Yeah. And you're not relying on p- other people to schedule as no. much because, you know, like... W- a, a weed shop is probably going to be there regardless of whether they're, they're always going to be on time. I mean, don't get me wrong. We always have struggles and struggling and <laughs> or in scheduling and stuff, but, um, overall, yeah. you know, it's, it's definitely a lot, uh, more conducive to what I want to do to be able to, uh, provide a great end product. Um, so yeah, less communication with humans, more communication with the plant. Yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you get to, you never get to smoke a human after you shoot it either. No, it's probably not ethical either. You're not ethical. <laughs> yeah. But no problem with that in the weed nope, industry. Nope. Not at all. You know, uh, indulge, indulging in the products that um, we shoot, you know, it, it really helps us. Um, I don't know. What was I saying? <laughs> There you go, folks. <laughs> Marijuana, you know, it does have short-term memory impact a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Good thing for notes, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's interesting because we're going to run some of your photos right now in the background. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, check it out. Look look at your screen. If you're not watching this on YouTube and you're listening, it might be a good one to go check out on YouTube because I want to show your work. And while well, we're looking at your work right now. For sure. So to explain to me a little bit about what makes your, we were talking about focus, uh, focus stacking. Oh and yeah, focus that stacking. Nature. So, so how, why are these images, they are, they're unique looking. They're very high, de- high definition. You're seeing parts of the plant that even 
after my years of looking up close on stuff I've never really seen before. So how are you achieving that? For sure. So um, we use uh, either, either microscope objectives um, that is like kind of like fancied onto a, um, a, a lens of some sort to be able to bring um, those levels of magnification to a full frame camera body. Um, right. You know, and there are some lenses out like the one that I use, the Laowa um, 25 millimeter, I believe it is. Um, it's a 2x to 5x magnification. So I am on the cellular level um, shoot, shooting plant material. So you get to see the trichomes. You get to see the cellular structure of of the leaf, uh, of different of the bracts, of the stems, what have you, whichever yeah. uh, piece we choose to portray. Right. Um, so yeah, seeing, seeing it at that point uh, or at that level for even cultivators, or cu cultivators, um, you know, it's more scientific and they get to kind of see their plant at a different level so they can understand like the nutrient levels, what they need to do, if they need to make changes in their grow, if they don't. It's a little more quality, yeah, like qualitative uh, analysis almost. Yeah. For sure, for sure. So I guess going back to, you know, um, speaking about why I love it so much is because I get to do the scientific side plus the artistic side. Right. Um, and yeah, it's just mashes them up into one. I absolutely yeah. adore what I do now. Yeah. Um, how does know, focus stacking work? How does focus stacking work? Uh, you take uh, the focus from the very front of your image um, and the very back of your image, and then you choose how many images you want to take in between from point A to point B, and all of those images are compiled together in one, and you get the sharpest piece of of each photo so yeah. then that's kind of like think of it as a panorama right. you know like you're taking photo 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 to get a, a wider longer image and then stitching it this is stitching it the opposite direction for depth yeah nice. so you're seeing something that is very small but super detailed and something you, your, our own eyes can't even really do that now not, not all at once no that's yeah, i mean like through a loop but then again like that's not your eye it's a it's yeah. a tool right yeah, that's cool. And I, I can see it in the shots. Yeah, I can see you're doing ro some rotational work as well, right? Like yeah, we're, we're we're stepping into that a little bit. Yep. Um, it's it's definitely new, but it's definitely something that the industry wants, the consumer wants to see. You know, uh, before you go into a dispensary to purchase, where are you looking? Yeah, you're, you're looking on Instagram, a website, website, Instagram, or, where right. have you? And you know where Instagram is going has gone. Video is key. Right. So being able to offer rotational videos plus you know drone footage and gimbal work in yeah, the dude. grow out of dispensaries you know at events all of this stuff that's cool yeah for sure it's super fun that's super fun and it's, i mean you're, you're 36 now right i am i just turned 36 in november so can, well happy belated thank you 36 and what you know you've learned a lot throughout the years you had kind of a difficult child not difficult but like you had you moved around i did move around so yep. why don't you give a, just a real quick kind of pitch on your or background of finding your creative niche and kind of following the path that you thought you should have, you know what I mean? Like what did, how did your background ultimately lead you to, to have the desire and the confidence to go out on your own and do this? Because I know it didn't come right away. For sure. I, I'm, I guess the gist for that, you know, like I, I did move around quite a bit. So I was, I was able to see life from different perspectives. Um, some weren't the best perspectives. Yeah. Um, and Those some are were. just as valuable sometimes. Yeah, right? no, absolutely. I, I think some of the hardest times in our life, just as a whole, you know, is like where we learn the most. Of course. Um, you know, so so going back, you know, I um, was born in California, raised in East Michigan, um, you know, little town just north of Bay City, uh, right, right on Saginaw Bay. Um, Linwood, right? Or it's just below Linwood is Cock Oh, Cock okay, yeah, yeah. Close though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, super, super small town growing up. It was rad, you know, as an only child. So I kind of got to explore what I liked and dis and disliked growing up. Um, mom and her husband divorced at 11 for me. Uh, and then shortly after that, I think we moved to Ohio. Then went back out west to live with my dad. I was 16. That's like a new experience though. Yeah, 16, yeah, yeah, sure. you're kind of feeling like you're independent now, finally. Now you're moved in with your dad that you haven't really been around for a long time. Yeah, for a long time. So it was super, super new. Everything was exciting. Got to spend a lot of time in South Lake Tahoe. It's gorgeous. Loved it. Didn't want to go to the Midwest. Didn't want to go back. <laughs> yeah, you're a nature guy. I was, guy, I was like, what? Yeah. Where, where am I at? This place is awesome. But, <laughs> um, you know, long story short, went to college in San Diego for 
graphic design. Um, always wanted to go for like videography and stuff ever since like skateboard days. Yeah. Um, but didn't work out that way. Went for graphic design. Thought it was something that I really loved. Um, I did love it for a while. Uh, worked at a couple newspapers and then ended up working for Meyer. Um, but I just got really sick of the the nine to five, the corporate life. I, I guess it just it just wasn't for me, you know. So like, I I wanted to find something that fit me better. So so did you feel like I know my answer to this, but what did the nine to five kind of ultimately like? What did it do to destroy you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Saying like, well, I guess at the end at of that, day- yeah, for sure. No, at that at that point in my life, getting up on time. Yeah, right, right. You right. know, it, it was it was always a struggle. Um, having to be somewhere at a certain time, you know, I don't know. I've, I've, I, I guess it's just the resistance in me. I just didn't want to. So I didn't. Yeah. It's like, you, but, if you're, if it was just your own way, if it was your own company, you had no trouble getting up whenever, but when absolutely. someone's telling you to do it, it's yeah, hard. For sure. For sure. For sure. So it's a problem with authority at the end of the day. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it, it is, it is hard as a person who's, who's a creative, you're a creative person. It, creativity doesn't, is not a schedule, schedulable thing. No, it but really I've, I've learned to be able to hone it into like certain times of the day. So I know when like, but it's not necessarily going to be nine to five every day though. No, not at all. You know, and that, that's partially that, that framework makes it hard for me. For what made it eventually hard for me to really be working at the clip that I wanted to work at all the time, because of those hours of the day sometimes aren't those aren't the prime time for me. For sure. I mean, you know? some, sometimes one day it could be like eight, nine o'clock in the morning. The next day it could be four o'clock in the morning <laughs> or like maybe five o'clock in the afternoon. Exactly. You know, it, it, it all depends on the day. It depends on what happens. Um, you know, which way the sun rises and sets. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true though. <laughs> it's true. And nowadays, you know, like with the people are working from home more, people are getting a little more flexibility even within their nine to five. Yeah. And I think that even though people are working less, let's face it, if you're working at home right now from home, you're not putting in the same amount of hours you were, but I bet you're getting more production. Absolutely. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. And I think I just like kind of power pack it into like, um, the most productive times of my day and I'm able to just get so much accomplished because I'm in my own area, you know, like I'm comfortable. I, I, I feel safe. I feel, uh, focused yeah. and all of my environmental things are the way that I want them to be. Yeah. You don't have some coworker coming up and saying, Hey, what'd you do this weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah for <laughs> sure. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I have my kids coming up to me and stuff too, you know, like, yeah. so they're, they're kind of like coworkers, but they're, they're, they're definitely more, um, fun to work with. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your boys a little bit. So they're eight and 10, right? Yeah, for sure. So yeah, they're Dakota, both get, Dakota they're, and Kai. Dakota and Kai. And they're yep. both kind of getting into the arts now too. Absolutely, man. They got hair down like, past their shoulders they, they they love anything outdoors um you know and anything creative um both of them are really stepping their games up but um especially my 10 year old he the dude can draw and i love it i love to just help him uh you know focus on his creativity and his imagination and and hold with it as long as he can yeah because you kind of know what it's like when you lose that a little bit too so it's like yeah for sure no yeah. um especially like you know my first job working in a newspaper right you know right out of college it was just it was fit this format fit this format fit this format and you're did moving I, like headlines really, around and like literally yeah, the text he, he, and all that. headlines text you know columns of text i'm like some cool I don't a couple know, black the, and white photos here yeah, yeah 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 for sure i mean we had some <laughs> color photos and stuff too but um you know it wasn't much creativity yeah. It, it was it was very mundane after a while um so being able to to teach the boys to be creative and be imaginative and really show them that you can do whatever you put your mind to as long as you put in the hard work and i think that's like one of the biggest things that we push at home you know even with the girls um you know you just got to be dedicated yeah and know what you want and if you don't know be dedicated to find out. Hustle while you're finding it out. Yeah, for sure. Try different things. Try as many things as, as you can get your hands on. Yeah. But do it in a good way so you can kind of figure out what you like, what you don't like, or what you dislike or like, right. and move in that direction. Yeah, dude. That's a valuable lesson. Because that's that's a, kind of a more new age parenting style. No, no disrespect to my parents or your parents, you know? Yeah. But- it, it, we used to be kind of taught to follow follow the path a little bit more for sure you know but that was also because there were less avenues out there to do your own thing 100 now, now that instagram exists and tiktok and <laughs> yeah. all the and video is everywhere it's like become everyone's living their own reality life tv show now for sure there's for all sure. sorts of opportunity it's just about but it also makes it very competitive right right it does and like the cre- the creative field was already competitive and now and now 
so many more people have access to this stuff. Yeah. It's just like you're competing with almost everybody out there. Yeah. But I would, uh, from my perspective, I would trade access all day for competition. 100%. Because before, you used to have to know the right guy at NBC or something to even get a chance to, to have an online video or something. Yeah, for sure. And or, just be, you know, be able to catch the algorithm, right? And, you know, just like networking, you know, you, you just got to get yourself in front of people. Yeah. And one of the, pe one of the people you talk to is going to be the right one. Yeah, right. But that's why it makes every interaction important. Absolutely. You got to treat everyone well. For sure. You know, you got to be straight with them too, if that's yeah. necessary. It, but like, integrity is, is essential. Yeah. In the photography game, especially because 99% of photographers out there are good people doing the right thing. And especially in the portraiture game. Oh yeah. But the, you know, 1% of those people are creeps and that that's going to wear off on you too. People are going to just assume that's what, what they're getting. If, if you, this guy's coming over to shoot you in lingerie, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> right like yeah, there, there's a huge like stature around portrait photographers especially in in like nude photography or any like dark arty kind of stuff man it's just you know it's unfortunate that people use a, an outlet to do yeah. malicious things yeah and when we talked last time you talked when you were doing more portrait stuff you really talked about how the confidence of the subject is like your best payoff of all that yeah absolutely you know and when and, and then you have someone uh, people out there that are trying to pervert that yeah take something that's supposed to be about their own personal journey and getting the confidence or whatever the their need is for sure and I, and I think you know just like all around like the world's so volatile right now and like you do we really need more people like that like right yeah, no thanks but it's getting harder to be like that nowadays. For cancel, sure. can't, people bitch a lot cancel about cancel culture, culture yeah. but it saves a lot of bullshit too. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, and it, it's especially at the lower level, like people are getting canceled at levels that, where they're not even famous. You know, all it takes in, yeah, this, in this game is especially, one person to say something. Especially going back to, you know, like what you were saying about like people being like creepy and stuff, you know, like a lot more, pe a lot more women are, are speaking up about how they've been mistreated and yeah. good for them. Yeah. Proud, I'm proud of them for it. Right. Like that's, that's awesome that they feel that, um, you know, that they're, they have an environment or, or, uh, uh, area to stand up and say what has been needed to be said for a long time. And actually be believed too. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Instead of just, well, I mean, maybe you're the one doing the nude photos. Yeah. Like that makes you a target to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. J just, just like wearing clothing is a target. You yeah. Know you shouldn't mean? dress like, like that if you didn't want to get. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Dudes are stupid. Absolutely. We're, we're changing that, right? Yeah, we're trying to, yeah. you know, um, and, and it takes a community with, with, uh, like-mindedness and a, and a voice Yeah, and it's, and it's awesome to see. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, talk, let's talk a little bit directly to the people here that, that w potentially could be interested in, in roasted media services because you came here today. I, I have a little magazine article coming up on an online magazine. It's nothing major, but they asked for some photos. So my first thought of course was I got to call Ryan. Because and, Ryan, and that's they, awesome that you think of, of, well, yeah. of me first. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I, he charged me less than his actual rate, so I'm not even going to go there. But <laughs> in exchange for that, I'm hoping that this can turn into some people that give you a call that want some work done. So Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I, I guess the biggest platform to find us right now is on Instagram. So it's instagram.com forward slash roasted.media. Check the um, show notes for a direct link for that too, but roasted.media. Roasted.media. And then um, the website we'll be following, it's under construction currently. So that will be uh, www roasted dot media no dot com oh dot media, media. nice but, yeah so emails kind of follow with it yeah. you know if you are interested in product photography or video or design uh you can e reach out to us at info at roasted dot media and i know there's some cannabis uh companies out there listening um savant farms for instance give give ryan a call i'll hook you guys up directly after this too but um yeah, dude. And so, but you're also taking, you know, you showed me some artwork that you just recently did art, more art portrait stuff. Yeah. I've, I've been trying to take a little bit more time to do, um, creative portraits because you know, it, it was, it, it, it did get, I guess, lack of better terms, mundane again. It's just work, 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 work. Okay. Where am I going to find new creative inspiration? I need to do some stuff for me again and, yeah. and finding balance too, you know, finding balance and being able to do work and fun creative projects that are just for me. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's yeah. how we grow. So, yeah, dude. So look, look roasted media up. It's cool. He does awesome work. You're all, you've, you've seen a lot of pictures here that were flashed on the YouTube video too, throughout this too. So you already kind of have an idea of how good it's cool. It's cool work. <laughs> Thanks. I man. don't even know how to, I, I'm not great at describing, you know, exactly what makes it special, but it, the con, the contrasting and the lighting and all that, it's unique. Yeah. I appreciate that. It's dope. 
and now you're getting into video. You now you've got your sons kind of helping you. Yeah, yeah, for background. sure. I mean, you never know what you see, uh, what you might see in the future. You know, um, yeah, might might be building some prodigies. We'll see. Exactly. You know, if they love it, then cool. If yeah. not, whatever. It, well, what about like for a cannabis company specifically? What kind of agreement do you typically get in with these folks? Is it like a shop by shop basis thing, or oh, uh, you- we do a lot of project uh per project based stuff but um we do offer uh retainer based stuff too so like we could come on for like uh you know uh 90 days to a six month or to an annual contract depending on your needs and your in your marketing department yeah. um i think that's like one of the biggest things that uh in companies in this space lack is somebody directed at marketing um so there's there is some learning curves to be had, you know, and that it is what it is. You know, it's a, it's a new, it's a yeah. new industry to the public and, right. and, a, and a new legal industry for a lot of these people. Um, and a lot of the growers and stuff that we work with, uh, come from the legacy market. So they're not really particularly knowledgeable of how to market now, now versus how they did say in the trap. Yeah. You know, it, it's, right. it's a different animal. So you just got to approach it differently. Yeah, you can. We're put, here to help you. Yeah, when you're just trapping, you're just like throwing Snapchats up. Yeah, and yeah, yeah you don't for get sure. Caught. I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> good weed just doesn't sell itself anymore. Right. Like everybody's got good weed. Yeah, there's there's a thousand options for sure. Yeah. So how are you going to set yourself apart? You're going to call Roasted Dot Media. Check out their website when it's ready. But let's talk a little bit more about what we've learned here. So not today, but just in general, we when we were doing the shoot. You know, today we talked a lot about this anyway, but like the people weren't listening to that. So sure. some lessons that you've learned and what are, you know, if you could, if you could give the listeners and the viewers some, some lessons that you learned so that they don't have to, or that they, they can maybe apply to their own lives. What would you say? Uh, I guess all around, you know, just, um, learning your worth, learning your worth, your self-worth and not, not so much even just like your worth on your work, but you know, about, about yourself, know what your time is valued at and what it should be valued at and, and hold yourself accountable. Um, yeah. I, I guess that's probably like one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is to say when you fucked up, say when you're wrong, be honest. Um, you know, that's going to take you a lot further in life than trying to make excuses. Um, and, and, and that can be applied to anything. And clients like it, by the way, if you, if you screw up, they don't mind that you screwed up. If, if you take accountability for it, it yeah. shows a certain character that they're expecting. Abs- absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, you know, um, as, as a new business owner and stuff too, you know, like I'm learning a lot as I go. So am I perfect? Absolutely not. Right. Do I try hard? Sure. hundred percent. Um, do I have a lot to learn? Yes, I do. And I'm excited for it. I'm excited to, I'm excited to screw up. I'm excited to fail. Yeah. So you can learn. So I can learn and I can be better. Yeah. And I think, you know, especially with how the world is right now as a whole everybody looks at instagram looks at snapchat looks at facebook whatever social media you're on um and builds this thought of perfection right and we're not perfect (laughs) it's very curated appearance we don't look like the filters that we use (laughs) you know we screw up we make we make mistakes and like and that's okay. And I think people need to learn that it's okay yeah. to make, to make a fuck up, to, to make yeah. a mistake, you know, get out there, try stuff. Um, don't be perfect, mess up, screw up and just remember like what you did. Yeah. And don't do that again. Don't it. do it again. Yeah. 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 For sure. Or if it worked out, do it again. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, um, yeah, just get out there and, and do the work. There's a lot of people that take the fake it till you make it concept and think of that as like imitation or or kind of pretend, but it it can mean something different too. And it can just be that like, just because you're not the most polished photographer or podcaster yet, sure, you can still go about your business. And that's what the fake it part is. Go about your business as if you are. The rest of the skills yeah, and all that ha, stuff will have come. The, have the confidence. Have the confidence. That, yeah, fake the confidence. For sure. You know? yeah, but it doesn't, fake, mean, does, fi- doesn't mean go buy a... Nine thousand dollar camera on your for, for, before your first shoot. Yeah, ever. before it doesn't you even know how to like turn it from manual to auto. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, don't don't dive in dive in the water where you can't touch if you can't swim. Yeah. But you know, take baby steps and and, and work at it. I, yeah, put, time, put the time in. Put yeah. the time in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we in in creative endeavors when we're young, we have no problem trying stuff that we're bad at. 
but having gone through learning the piano a little bit, learning the drums a little bit, all in my life in the last couple of years, like you have to, there's a, there's an internal resistance at our age to stop at something when you suck at it. For sure. You know, when for you're sure. a kid, you don't really care. And that's no. how we become good at stuff when you're little, you yeah. suck for a while first. Yep. You know, but so if you see through the difficulty of the challenge and, and you, you look for the areas where you're getting better and build your confidence with that, the, the stuff becomes just as fun as when you're a kid. For sure. Like and the I, learning part is so fun. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think as we grow older too, man, um, a lot of people let go of that side of things, you know, and, and just, and just kind of fall into this cyclical kind of rotation of like a routine of a routine. Yeah, 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 for sure. And we forget that the mentality that we had as children with our imagination and our, and our willingness to, to put ourselves out there and try and fall and get hurt and get up again and do it again and again and again. That's the difference. A lot of people lose that. And yeah. like, it didn't go anywhere. No, it's still there. It's just societal pressure and financial sure. pressures and for all the sure. other stuff that makes you think that you, but like, how many of us are, I can speak for myself when I was working my ass off at my corporate job, making way better money. Of course I would come home and I'd still have five hours to watch TV or just waste it. Right. You know? And like part of that was just to numb the fact that I wasn't really fulfilled elsewhere, but I, I could have been taking that time after work to write and to take pictures and to draw or whatever, whatever yeah, yeah, suited me sure. at the time. And now that I have time carved out because of the podcast, I I, re, I realize how how important the, the and how aggressive the value of making time for that is, even if you have no intention to make it a career or something. For sure, I mean, yeah, no, exactly. You know, like um, one of my hobbies is trout fishing. Uh, I absolutely love it. It's my it's my place of peace. It's my place of balance. It's it's um, my place where I need where I go when I'm having a hard time yeah and it's like meditative for you ab absolutely absolutely you know just being out there um it doesn't even really matter if i'm catching fish but obviously it makes it Helps. a lot better <laughs> when we're catching a lot better fish you know um but it is what it is it's it's the process of of getting out away from your job whether you work for yourself or you work for somebody else um removing yourself from that cyclical endeavor you know um creates balance yeah. And, it, and it allows you to separate the two and not be overwhelmed and not feel like you're pigeonholed into a corner of like societal like measurements, which is all just kind of your own internal fears and stuff. Yeah, anyway. yeah for sure. Yeah. I mean, particularly in, you know, in the podcasting game, in the photography game, a lot of our work is spent on social media. It just has to be, unfortunately. Yeah. And so it becomes difficult for maybe the outside outsider looking in like this, is this, what's, this isn't work, what he's doing. Yeah. But if anything, that's the most cumbersome work to me as a social media part. I just dislike it. I dislike it, it too, but, but it's, it's so it, important. you have to. It, you, so, you, so like, so when, when the professional and otherwise personal type endeavors start to blend because of the nature of it, mm -hmm. it makes it a little bit harder to put boundaries on it sometimes. For sure. You know, for sure. For you, you have trout fishing. That's a great uh, release for you, you know, but I, I guess I need to find what, what that is for me. Music. You know? Yeah, it is. It is music, yeah, but yeah. even when I'm doing that, I'm still in my head like, "Oh man, I gotta use this on a podcast." Yeah, yeah, right? for sure. <laughs> it's for like sure. I'm, all, I'm so like obsessed with it all the time yeah. that like, I need to find a way to step away. No, and and yeah. and that's you know, going back to this summer, I we took a family trip up to New York. Went to took the kids um, for Dakota's birthday, my oldest. Um, for his birthday, we went to Niagara Falls. Nice and. You know, I'm going to Niagara Falls. I'm thinking, oh, you know, like I'm gonna get a great photo. I made it, I made myself a promise to not bring my camera. Yeah. I left it in the car or I, or no, I left it at my mom's house where we were staying, but, um, I left it there and I took phone photos, Yeah, I took phone videos. I specifically had to do that to separate myself so I could take that core of memory and hold its value much more than I would be there to just like take a photo i didn't want to work yeah the, the value of the inspiration is way higher than the whatever great picture you might have taken 100 percent. yeah like sure could i get a could have got a really cool like long exposure shot of of the falls absolutely yeah you know could i have brought the drone and did some stuff over there probably yeah but you wouldn't you know? kind of been distracted from your kids though too. yeah absolutely yeah. so like spending spending that one-on-one -on -one time with them and like really like immersifying myself into the moment was so much more worth it yeah that's good discipline yeah it's hard yeah 
It's hard, I mean, especially like, being a creative. Like you said, you know, like yeah. if, if you're if you're playing a song, if you're making a, a sound or whatever, like you want to use that. You're you're forward thinking about like how you could do that, how you could work. Yeah. You know, I think um, now that we're like full fledged adults, you know, and like doing <laughs> yeah. adult things and and having families and all this stuff, um, you know, remembering that work isn't always work, and sometimes it's play too. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just like I said, I guess that was a little confusing, but, um, no, yeah, no, I know exactly what you're saying. Just finding that balance and being able to dive on both ends. Yeah. Yeah. Like last year at the ski trip that the first year I did a podcast there, cause I didn't really know everyone there that well. And then last year, everyone was clamoring for me to do a podcast and I brought all my stuff, but I actually just skied the whole time. That's awesome. You know, and like they were, people were disappointed, but I needed that because it's work otherwise for yeah, me and for like sure. managing 30 drunk people that are trying to ski and trying to be funny and shit and, and trying to get interviewed. It's like impossible. Yeah. So last year I took a step away from that. I ended up doing an animated version of the ski trip because I could do that all post afterwards. And I used the, the, the ski trip itself as the inspiration for that. That's awesome. And this year I'm going to do kind of more of a passive thing where I set up like a diary room where people can go in at their own volition and hit record and say whatever they want. And I'll just deal with it later. That's cool. You know, so that'll be, it's kind of, I'm, you know, I'm like, excited to see you roll that out. Well, like That's you awesome. said too, like you kind of got to keep doing things and yeah, figure yeah, out what sure. works and what doesn't. And there's no question that the first ski trip episode was great, but it was hard, you know? And it, I, I came out of that trip kind of being like, oh man, I need kind of a, a vacation now kind of thing. Right. And, and that so, was supposed to be the vacation. And that was vacation. supposed to be the vacation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Uh, when we got back from New York, you, you know, I was super recharged. I was ready to go, ready to dive right back into it. And we yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. If you would have brought your camera out and take, taken a thousand pictures of Niagara Falls, you, felt, you wouldn't have felt that. Yeah. I don't even think that I took that many on my phone. No, because they suck compared to what you're, yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> we took some like cool like time lapses and stuff because we, we did the um, Made of the Mist tour and stuff. It was rad. That's cool. Yeah. We were right up front on the boat too. Like, yeah. like oh, just soaking wet. That's cool. Yeah, we didn't even really get that wet on the boat though. But like once we went up and like took like the, the staircase up the side of the falls and stuff like that's, yo, we got soaked. That's cool. Soaked. <laughs> yeah. It takes you back to your fly fishing feelings too. <laughs> yeah, sure. it, yeah. Yeah. Without the waiters. Without the waiters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, well let's let's get down to brass tacks here. Let's give me your critique of me as a subject. I don't mean like I know physically I'm not as beautiful as some of your subjects, <laughs> but let's talk about like th did I take direction? Okay, yeah, I think so, man. <laughs> I, I mean, both times that we've done like stuff. Um, oh yeah, we did we did do a weed shot at a cool ass beach house last yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, for sure. It never went anywhere, but you, I'll show some of those pictures right now. Yeah, you no, have some good ones. no. I mean, you you and Jess do uh, you know take direction great. Like okay. I, th I think we just you just like to have fun with it, and like that's that's what I'm all about you know like it doesn't necessarily need to be posed perfect or right. anything like that it just needs to show um your subjects authenticity and like who they are so you heard it here first i could be the next model the next <laughs> big model i just gotta lose like 30 pounds <laughs> i don't even think you gotta 12, do that. maybe 12 <laughs> years yeah so you gotta get get yourself out there you know know yeah. your worth <laughs> <laughs> man that's it podcast is over i'm going all in <laughs> how much can i can i hire you for a, follow me around with cameras like the kardashians for <laughs> just imagine that experience can you imagine the, 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 talk about just a recipe no, for disaster yeah. for anxiety and shit no thank you yeah. <laughs> like, a hard pass yeah i, still I mean feel, there's, there's with, somebody out there that absolutely loves to do it more power to them it's not me not you <laughs> no no not you no i like to be in my studio or in a garden immersed with cannabis and yeah you know f finding the best looking subject i mean that's really kind of a that's another nice thing about this. You already talked about the melding of science and art, but like you at the end of the day are a natural, you're an environmental kind of like you like, the, you like the woods. Yeah, I do. I yeah. love, I love the woods. I love the, 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 the streams, the streams, the, <laughs> the creeks, the waterfalls, you know, the, the moon rises, the sun rises, the sun sets, the beach, wh whatever yeah. it is, you know, and the agriculture element of weed gives you, or of cannabis, I should say to be, to call it what it really is. Yeah. The cannabis industry allows you that kind of naturalist vibe too. Yeah, it's absolutely. really a perfect. It, fit. It, it does. It melds perfectly. It's a, it's a little mixture of both things that I absolutely love. So yeah, it's it's nice. I think you know, um, definitely fell down, um, fell down the the drain to the right spot. So yeah, well, you're just doing your thing and you're just waiting for the right opportunity. So you never know. You never probably thought you're going to be taking legal weed shots. No, not ten years dude, ago. Ten years ago, I'd have never never even been able to put a thumb on it. Right. There's no way, um, you know, let alone just legalization at the state level and uh, and stuff. You know, I would have never thought that to be a truth, a, a you know, know, a regular day thing. 
it, it's it's still wild to me every single day. Yeah, so many of your clients who are probably dudes that were selling weed behind the Burger King in high school, and now they're doing it legit. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Now it's you know grown into the industry. It is. Yeah, dude. Well, it's awesome. And, it's, it's been fun to watch your work grow, and I'm happy. I'm happy. I, I know you gone down a couple different paths but like your work's always good regardless what you're doing so thanks man I appreciate keep it that. rolling people check out ryan check out roasted.media on instagram hire him for fuck's sake you know come on yeah jeez let's talk let's talk let's talk business here <laughs> especially if you're in the weed game for real though this guy is the, the, i'm gonna call i'm gonna say he's the best weed photographer out there so Ooh, go uh that's an accolade and i don't even i'm not even qualified to say that but i, I feel it <laughs> i believe it uh, there's there's some really good good uh creatives in this industry man and uh they're definitely uh making a mark for themselves as well humble too what more could you ask for in a photographer uh, ryan thanks Kurt? buddy yeah absolutely man thanks hell for yeah. having me on it's been fun check them sure. out folks peace hell yeah yeah <laughs> yeah for sure yeah i wasn't so baked out of my mind this time where i was like actually like uh...